Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. Just bringing you a quick video to showcase my new on screen display layout. Now, that's the program that's providing the live statistics in real time. This is called MSI Afterburner. Now, um, it's recently had quite a lot of um, updates which allows you to further customize your layout to how you please. And I've gone ahead and taken advantage of that and uh, I've given my on screen display a bit of a, a facelift. It's more modern more updated uh, layout and um, what I've done here is I've separated frames per second which is what most people are interested in red so you can instantly locate that information all the GPU information is in green matching the Nvidia GPU probably if I had an AMD GPU this would be red but uh, I'll, I'll change that as and when and CPU information is all in yellow so you can quickly differentiate um, each um, type of hardware or section you want to monitor or keep an eye on so what i'll do is just uh, look for your feedback in the comment section this is something i want to go ahead with with all my future videos I, I feel it's a more clean look and um hopefully you guys will agree so i'll start by disabling it and going through settings as i usually do so playing at a resolution of 3440 by 1440 uh, field of views at 85 and I'm using the Ultra preset using the DirectX 11 API. Now DirectX 12 is more, um, I would say the better choice if you are running a multi GPU um, solution. It does provide a performance Jeez. boost, but for single GPU, um, DirectX 11 with Nvidia is definitely the way to go. So I'm playing at ultra wide 3440 by 1440, something I didn't think I would actually do, but it has definitely been my favorite purchase um, my favorite acquisition out of all the hardware I've bought for, for a long time um, Batchfield one looks amazing on the Acer XR Fred for 2 ck at ultra wide and it plays very very smooth now the GTX 1080 Ti will pretty much always guarantee you 60 frames per second or above at this resolution but um, the GTX 1080 and the RX Vega 64 will do a decent job, but just more demanding games, for example, Rise of the Tomb Raider may may give you some issues at some times. But easily achieving over 100 frames per second at, at the moment. Oh, these guys are really trying to take me down. But this guy in the light machine gun, it always causes me issues. I want to try and take him out with a grenade. Just wait for my health to recover. Alright, I think I took him out. Not quite. <laughs> Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge him and throw a grenade. Just going to wait for my health to recover. Alright, took him down. We can advance. Shotguns. Tried to save my comrade there, just obviously wasn't quick enough. Let's go back to long range, shall we? So yeah, this I'm not going to play the whole level. I really just want to do a quick video just to showcase um, the new layout. Hopefully you guys will agree that this is a bit of a step up in presentation but I'll obviously I'll listen to your feedback and uh, if I'm agreeable with it I'll, I'll make the changes now a lot of you guys have been asking me about the new Intel Coffee Light 8700K so I may as well talk about it now I think it's a step forward for Intel, leaving behind uh, the quad core and going with six cores. So the i5 will be six cores without hyper threading, and the i7s will be six cores and 12 threads, much like the 5960X and the 6800K. So I was quite impressed with um, Richard from Digital Foundry's video showcasing the advancements of Coffee Lake. Obviously everyone's pretty bummed out about the um, common 
motherboard change that pretty much comes with every single Intel um, upgrade in terms of CPU but um, it does perform pretty much a lot better than the 6700K if anyone's still running the 2500K this is a time to upgrade for sure I'm still holding that for Cannon Lake or the updated Ryzen um, really have got no reason to change my 5960X as I don't game at 1080p and uh, most of my games are GPU bound anyway so I'm pretty happy with my setup 5960X running at 4.3 gigahertz pretty comfortably and still still supports still supports quad channel memory and still has 40 PCI Express lanes so and has I think 20 megabytes of cache so I'm not lacking in pretty much any department in terms of my processor so I'm pretty happy with it but for those of you who are just building a CPU now I mean a PC now then it's definitely something to consider okay let's take out a few of these guys with a shotgun what shots does this hold now let's get inside <laughs> that looked like it hurt. Who's this guy? Whoa. Wow, I got taken down at the last minute. Well, that's all cool. I didn't really want to play this game too seriously anyway. So that's a look at my new on-screen display. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.